Hello again. This time we are going to use RTFdump to analyze a real uh, malicious RTF file. This is the file, the sample. And as you can see, it contains uh, an enormous amount of uh, items, almost uh, 23,000. So that's, that's a strong indication of uh, obfuscation. So let's filter out for items that contain an object. Okay, and now we have a much simpler overview. So we have here uh, those entries uh, nested that contain objects here, uh, about 10,000 uh, character, hexadecimal characters. Also more than uh, a million characters in total, so it's clear that this contains a lot of obfuscation. So here we see 166 contains 11,429 hexadecimal characters, like the, the previous ones. Eh? And then this child here contains 2,315. So we are going to look first at uh, this one here, 166. So we select 166. We want the hex decode. And since it is an object, we also want information about the object, like this. Okay, and we see the information, the name, the position and the size, the hash and the magic. Uh, so this is an OLE file. And the magic header here, D0CF11E0, tells us it's an OLE file. So we are going to extract this OLE file and parse it with uh, OLE dump. So we select 166, we want the hex decode, and we are going to cut out the OLE file, so position 33, and the size E00, so that's the length. We want to dump this, that's the sample, and now we pass this on to OLE dump. Okay. And we get an error. Now, it, OLE dump recognized this as an uh, OLE file. Otherwise, we would not get an error, but a warning telling us that uh, it's not a valid OLE file. Okay, but it recognized an OLE file. The problem here is in parsing the OLE file itself. And you see here incorrect OLE fat sector index out of range and, and the errors occur in the OLE file module. Okay, so we are uh, a bit stuck here to analyze this uh, with OLE dump. So we are going to try something else. RTF dump also supports uh, Jara, like this. And I have a couple of Jara rules here. And we want those Jara rules to scan through the strings that contain hexadecimal data. So we're going to do hex decode on this sample. Okay, and this is uh, interesting now. We see again what we have the same objects, 160, 165, 166, 167. And in our objects, 166, we have three Jara rules that triggered. Now the first one for an RTF object, eh? okay, uh, no, uh, sorry, that's the last one, but this one triggers for an RTF object. Now that's not surprising eh, because it indeed contains an object. This one here, this rule indicates that this object contains the string HTTP. So somewhere in the binary data, there is the string HTTP. So that's interesting. And also there is the class ID for listview2. Now there are exploits for uh, this com object and uh, it's possible that this sample here, this malicious document, contains an exploit 
which is a downloader via HTTP. So we are going to try to find out where this is uh, located. And we can do this by using the same command, but with option Jara strings. And this will tell us more information about the strings that are found. Like this, okay. So object 66, our string HTTP, one instance of that string HTTP is found at location 000, sorry, 000 CB6. So let's uh, cut out uh, this position out of uh, the data and see what we have here there. So CB6, an RTF dump of 166, hex decode, and we want this from CB6, and we are going to take 100 hexadecimal bytes and this in our sample. Okay, and indeed, we discovered HTTP and it is a URL. Uh, you have here the URL and the extension LL.exe uh, is a strong indication that it is indeed an executable PE file that is downloaded. So since we also saw the class ID for release view, this is uh, probably an exploit, and we can also then expect to find shellcode. So let's see what we find here before this uh, data. So we will issue the same command, but we will look at a bit more bytes, at 300 hex bytes in total, and let's start from AB6 instead of CB6, so 200 hex bytes earlier, like this. Okay, and we have our string here, and then a lot of bytes here. Now, if you look closely, you see some, some words like exit here, proc, URL here, hwin here. And then here, there's question marks, if you look here, 909090. So this looks like a small knobslet. So this is uh, very likely shellcode for an exploit. And we are going to uh, extract that shellcode and uh, take a closer look at it. So we have a, a small knobslet here, 909090, and then here it follows by 33C9. So we are going to search for that sequence and then select uh, the data, the cut the data out of uh, the stream with that position that we find. So we do it like this. So a hex decode, and we are going to cut, but this time instead of giving a position, we're going to give bytes that have to be found inside the sequence of bytes, so 33C9, that's our sequence that we want to find, and when we have found that, we are going to take 150 hexadecimal bytes out of that sample, like this. Yeah, okay, and now we have this here, uh, a small knobslet, shellcode, and URL. Okay, so we can try to analyze this. I'm going to show two methods. For the first method, we take exactly uh, the same command, but instead of doing uh, an ASCII hex dump, we will dump it and uh, disassemble it with Hadari 2. So disassembler here. We expect that it is x86 code. It's binary data that we pipe into it. We want to disassemble it. 
and also see the hex code and uh, so we want to take it from standard input because we are piping it into it so and indeed here at the end we see our zeros but this looks indeed like shell code this here yeah the knob slit the XOR is CX E6 to zero is CX register. So uh, this is a uh, uh, shell code, it disassembles. This here looks more less than shell code, but this is because this is actually the URL. Uh, you can see here HTTP colon slash slash. Hmm. So another method we are going to do that uh, with uh, a shell code. We are going to decode this with the, a shellcode emulator uh, for libemu. Now I only have this uh, for Windows, so I'm going to use Wine here to use uh, that Windows tool. So first of all, instead of disassembling it with Radare, let's put it in a file because that uh, shellcode emulator needs a file. And then we run wine, the shellcode emulator, and we pass it the shellcode as a file, like this. Okay, so and this is the output from wine, but here, from here on, you can see the output from the shellcode emulator. So it reads the bytes, and you can see what the shellcode actually does. It uses the URL download to file uh, API call to download from this URL and write this to file word.scr. And then it executes that file and uh, exits.